fantastic. Well, thank you all for the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, indeed, I should introduce myself. I'm Professor Darren McCauley. I am Chair of the Management of International Social Challenges. I have the pleasure uh, to be involved in and lead a fantastic undergraduate program, as well as a group of researchers on global social challenges. Now, in the remaining four minutes and 30 seconds I have to speak to you, I just want you to think about one question. What is transformative energy justice, very simply? So the way I would like to approach this is, well, to give you some reflections from my own research and my own experiences. And I think the most interesting example to bring up is indeed my collaborative work with the University of Malawi. And I guess to begin with, we've got to think about, well, what is energy justice? Now, very simply, it's about fair and equitable energy production and access. Okay, so keep that in your mind. But this, tr this transformative aspect is particularly interesting. Now, in our research, what we find is three specific visions of transformative energy justice in Malawi. We find an international organizationally driven view of transformative energy justice. What we see is organizations such as UNDP and others viewing the need to establish large scale, normally solar projects in the north of Malawi in order to empower and garner the, the sort of up and coming businesses. Continue Floor, don't worry. That's, we didn't say anything too private, so you should feel good. In, it's, our, it's our organization hosting WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the, the problems with this first vision is indeed that uh, they tend to be fully focused on industry. And on top of that, because of the poor grid infrastructure in Malawi, there's very little access for Malawians, particularly outside those very narrow regions where industry is setting up. The second vision of transformative energy justice in Malawi is driven by China. And in particular, a $600 million coal power station investment. Okay, I think we can all see maybe problems there with the, clim the climate transition uh, imperative, but also problems with regards to getting beyond the city context, in, in this case of Blantyre, uh, where we can achieve better and fairer uh, energy production and access for the country. So this vision isn't particularly transformative, one might say. And then there's a third vision, which is coming from local communities, NGOs, uh, international NGOs also, that is designed around, okay, here is some small scale, uh, for example, solar, uh, small scale hydro, and let's put on training programs for local communities. Problem is short term also, often appealing to the same people. So whilst it's more encouraging, it's not what we see as transformative energy justice. Well, what is transformative energy justice? It is the spaces in between. Okay, God, how academic an answer is that? What do I mean by that? Well, very simply, if you take the international organizational viewpoint, in reality, local communities around these disused under-invested solar parks are communities that are organized in a way to make use of the solar energy that has been established there, for which it wasn't designed for. In the local communities perspective, what we find is the disused small-scale solar panels are being adopted by communities and reused and repurposed, for example, allowing for some people to move into the city to set up hairdresser industries and the like. And then thirdly, in terms of China and their vision, in reality, what we find is uh, radios, car radios that have been dumped by China being repurposed as batteries. What do I mean by all this? Well, very simply, my conclusion from the Malawi case, a very different context from what uh, you know, we're normally uh, used to is when people are not empowered, when energy is not fair, 
production or access. People empower themselves. And it's in this space that I think we find transformative energy justice. Five minutes.